All right, today is a top 10 failures or mistakes with the Thielene roller mat here. Uh, this is just a piece of filter floss that automatically rolls the waste right out of the tank, but you can learn from our mistakes here so you don't have to learn them yourself. All right, so number one, we get this question all the time. Does it have to go down my overflow or can I just put a pump on it and have it recirculate through my sump? Yeah, so the mistake is assuming that the recirculating pump, I just drop a pump in and feed it because I already plumbed my tank, is going to be as good as the entire overflow going through this thing. One's better than the other and you probably should do it the latter way. Yeah, so here's the deal. If it's plumbed off your overflow, all of your whole pellet foods, all of the turds, all of the little shrimp and stuff from your frozen foods, go down the overflow, they drop right in here, get caught in the paper, and then rolled right out of the tank. Uh, if you just put a pump on it and set it down to your sump, it's a way, way easier so uh, install. It will have some of the benefits, but not all of them, mm. because now it needs to suck in the shrimp and stuff. What it actually will get mostly is actually when that stuff starts to degrade a little bit yep. further into smaller particles, that's when it will clean up all of that out of the water. So not the same, it will still work, but note that doing it on your overflow is the best install. Number two, I didn't think this could be true, but it is. <laughs> yeah, so the mistake here is not thinking that uh, this can be too effective of a filtration. So when you couple it with that you know, high powered skimmer that you already have, maybe some other filtration equipment that you already have, this can actually filter the tank too much. Yeah, so uh, what happens here is if you have a filter sock, it'll catch it, but it'll actually degrade a lot of it and mm -hmm. just deteriorates and goes into the tank. Hopefully your skimmer catches it, but you know, all these things only catch a portion of it. Yep. Uh, in this case, we're catching that whole shrimp and probably within a couple of hours, just removing it all the way out of the tank. Done. So uh, it can be too effective in the essence that you might find if you have a lot of coral and they're just sucking up nitrogen and phosphorus, you might find zero, 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 which isn't really good. So just note that there are ways to adjust it, but note here that uh, in some cases, this is probably the most effective filtration or nutrient removal system in the entire thing because it removes it before it even starts to degrade. This and filter socks, the only solution that does that. Number three, I just did this on my own tank and I'm really happy I did. Yeah, so because this thing is such an effective filter, the mistake is not sizing down or thinking about sizing down your skimmer. The you know, protein skimmer doesn't need to be as effective because like you said, all of the large particles are taken out of the tank before they even break down for the skimmer. So you might wanna reconsider the size of that skimmer. Yeah, so what we've learned over the last year or two is oversized skimmers don't work. No. So like going too big is actually way worse than going too small. So here's the thing, all these skimmers are rated for, you know, bio load. Mm -hmm. And you start to think about it in terms of size of fish, but it isn't that. It's the amount of food that you have to put in to support those fish. Right. So here's the thing, if this turns up and captures half of the turds and the food, I can actually go with half the skimmer size. Oh, yeah. And so if I remove all of that, essentially those organics are fuel for this larger skimmer. If they don't have those organics, the skimmer actually doesn't work. You can watch all Randy's investigates on that. It's pretty interesting, but oversizing your skimmer is no good. So if you're gonna have something this effective, you're actually going to want to downsize your skimmer or at least create that balance. All right, number four, another really common mistake here oh, yeah. that a lot of people make trying to match this to their tank yep. and they just don't understand. Yeah, so the mistake is missing just how much 500 gallons per hour flow rate is. This has a max flow rate of 500 gallons per hour, but when you think of it in like terms of turnover, you know, it's a 100 gallon tank, that's five times an hour, more than enough. Yeah, so here's the deal. A lot of people think that uh, I was looking for 10X turnover. That is kind of like faded away. And even if you thought you were getting that, just because I had a 100 gallon tank, and I put a thousand gallon an hour pump on it. Half. The reality is I was probably getting four to 500 gallons anyway. Yep. Yep. All the head pressure and everything. So here's the thing is we are definitely looking for, in most reef tanks, you know, probably in that two to three X turnover, I just need to filter the water two to three times an hour. And I also need to keep it heated and all that. Mm. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, so for a hundred gallon, this 500 gallons an hour max flow rating, that's good for up to a hundred gallon tank. Yep. And then if you do it about two and a half times, that's good to a 200 gallon tank. All right, so number five, in terms of flow, this is actually one of the ways that you can adjust the effectiveness and length of paper as well. Yeah, so the, the mistake of not understanding what a lower flow rate will do. So I've got that hundred gallon tank. I've got it at five times turnover, but what happens when I run it at two times turnover? Well, now I've got a slower flow rate going in here and it affects the performance. Yeah. So there is a float switch in here. And so as the paper gets clogged mm -hmm. uh, with uh, waste, 
what happens is the water level rises. It hits the float switch and then it winds some of the poo right out of the tank. And uh, in that case, what happens if we go a, flow, a lower flow rate is it doesn't rise as fast because there's not mm -hmm. as much back pressure. That means this is adjustable by flow rate, meaning if I go a lower flow rate, it has a longer time to deteriorate in the tank. And that means for some of you that where this is working too well, you can actually slow down the filtration by uh, decreasing the flow rate through it, either by just turning down your uh, overflow or even just pouring off a little bit of the water around mm, it. So yeah. totally, totally legit solutions. And on top of that, you'll actually go through paper much slower as well and save a few bucks. However, there's the inverse of that as well. Yeah, so the mistake is not understanding what high flow does. So again, I'm at two and a half or two times turnover on my 100 gallon tank, but I want to increase it to five. Higher flow through this is kind of a little bit of the opposite of that, so you can find a balance. Yeah, so if I go through it higher, there'd be more back pressure, I'm gonna capture more waste, it'll clog faster, and it will take the waste out faster, meaning it won't deteriorate in the tank. Mm -hmm. So if I'm seeing increased in nitrogen and phosphorate or nitrate and phosphate yeah. levels over time, and my filtration isn't keeping up with my food input, I can actually just increase the amount of water that's going through here and then increase the amount that it pulls out as well as before it decays. So this makes this a adjustable filter to meet your needs. All right, so number seven, it comes with these little barb fittings. I wouldn't use them. Yeah, so the mistake is not realizing that an inch and a half union actually fits right on top. This is what we found with our 750XXL when we installed it. Screws right in there. Now you got hard, uh, you can do hard plumbing or what have you. Yeah, so it, even if you're gonna like then put a barb fitting in here, it makes it really, really easy to remove it, do maintenance, yeah. do anything you wanna do to it. So uh, the barb fittings kind of are hard to wiggle out of place. So the union screws right on top, it makes it really, really easy. All right, so what if I have a thousand gallons an hour going through my sump and this thing only does 500, what do I do? Yeah, so the mistake is thinking that you're locked into all of your overflow going through here and then you're stuck to that 500 gallon per hour when actually, if you have two overflows or two drains, you can just split it up. You can even just split it, tee it off right at the top of this and just pour some water down yep. and uh, adjust it. You could also just do two if you wanted as well. But note that all the water from the overflow doesn't have to, have to go through there. If you capture half of the waste and then as it breaks down as well, uh, that's a way bigger advancement than the filter sock that was just sitting there in the past. So <laughs> just note that all the water doesn't have to go through it. All right, so number nine, there is a moving part that uh, helps it function. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of not cleaning the float. I mean, there is maintenance to all of this, but the float inside of there is just a standard, um, standard float switch, and it does get gunky, I and mean, you have to clean it up. Yeah, uh, you know, I would say, you know, quarterly, it makes sense to yeah. uh, clean it off like you would an auto top off uh, float. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of pay attention to it. If it gets stuck, you'll probably just waste some paper or it will start to go over, overflow the edge. And you'll see there's a port right here. So it will flow right over into your, your sump. Probably make some noise and tell you, hey, I'm clogged yeah. uh, in any case. So, but, you know, go ahead and clean the float and then just preempt that. All right. Number 10, it doesn't work if it doesn't have this. Yeah, so don't make the mistake. Buy yourself some extra rolls. Uh, it, rather than, oh, it's gone and now I have no filtration for the next week or however many days it takes to get a roll, uh, just buy, like, buy a few of them. Yeah, so uh, I would like to have like three of these on hand at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that these are imported from Europe, so once in a while there's a delay, so it's nice to have them just on hand. They're really inexpensive. So make sure to uh, pick up a couple extra rolls and keep the thing going all the time. All right, so if there's only one thing you learned today, let it be this. Yeah, for me, it is the lesson that you learned on your tank, and that is that this can be too effective. So think about your other filtration before implementing this, or think about your other filtration afterwards, but you are now in a filtering machine. Yeah, and that spirit, if you're having problems with uh, nitrogen or nitrate and phosphate scaling up and not matching your feeding, it's a great option to find that balance. Mm. But for me, the one thing, man, that you should really take away is this is actually adjustable. It's adjustable by the flow rate. Yep. The flow rate, not only the amount of stuff that it captures, but how quickly it takes it out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, adjust the flow rate, figure out the right thing for your tank. So if you can find out that your nitrates and phosphates are rising, put a little bit more flow through it. If there is zero, zero, put a little less and you'll have the results. So if you want to find out more about this thing, it's right here.